Hello everybody and welcome again to the Dr. Leria's Wall and today we are going to work with a simple technique in Unreal Engine. We'll see how to interact with the zoom of our camera using the focal length and at the same time we are going to see how to use the depth of field of our camera to focus objects in our scene. I have to thank a community user this tutorial, Jorge Barcellona. I leave you here in the description of his YouTube channel where you are going to see the amazing quality of his work. Basically, he raised this question on Facebook, I answered him, and finally, I accepted the challenge of seeing how to do it. If you are interested with this technique, please keep watching this video tutorial. And if you like, if you are enjoying, please give me a like, subscribe to the channel, and let's go to the party. So, we are here in Unreal Engine, and as you know, I let you here in the description the download link for the project files. This is a simple thing, we are using a SDRI backdrop. Also, we are using a plane. This is the navigation plane for our third person character. And you need to have your collision activated in this plane. The player starts here and the post process volume. The only thing I have done here is uh, I set it in basic mode. This is because I want to use a fixed value for the exposure. And now to start this video tutorial, the first thing we want to do is add a feature or content pack. Okay, and we use here a first person, this content pack, we add to the project. Let's go to world settings and we set uh, this one, this uh, first person game mode. We play here and um, now it's working well. Well, as you know, at this moment we need to look for the blueprint here we are using for our first person character. Now we go here to this window and now we want to hide these actors and we are going to do it really easy. Just Uncheck Visible and check Hidden in Game. Now we compile and save, we play the game, and this is the mode we want to work. Okay. Well, the main idea of this video tutorial is to work with the main parameters of this camera. Like that, we are going to use our right mouse button to zoom in and zoom out using our focal length. And also, we are going to use the depth of field of our camera to focus the objects in our scene. And now, let me add here some simple objects. For example, this sphere, we place it here, uh, this cube, okay, and also this cylinder, okay, we got it here. And now we go back again to our first person character, Bluebrind, and what we want to do here in the graph event, look at this, these are all the functions and all the variables we are using, uh, these are programmatic functions. We don't care about it because we are going to create uh, new ones. So let's go here, for example, and we start creating a right mouse button. Okay, this action. And this is our first function. Well, like that, as I told you, we zoom in and zoom out in our viewport. Okay, let me look here. We have our components. And here in my character, we have the third person camera. We drop it here and we get first person camera. Now create a timeline and we name it like a zoom timeline. This will be the animation for our right mouse button click event. And now we make a connection here, press it with play and the release it output with the reverse input in the zoom timeline. Now we need to find here in our first person camera set field of view. Here it is. And now we need to connect that David output to this one set field of view input. And we do a double click here in the Thailand that we have created. We add a new float. We name it, for example, like a zoom value. We add a new keyframe here. We set the time for zero and the value. This is gonna be the first value for our field of view. And we use, for example, 90, okay? We set the duration to 0.5. We add another keyframe here at the end. In time, we use 0.5 and the value will use its 45, for example. Let's select all. We do a click with the right mouse button here and we select auto to smooth this animation. And let's go back again to our graph event. And here you have uh, the zoom value. What we need to do is really simple. Let's connect it to our field of view. Now compile and save again. 
and this is the beginning, this is the most easiest part of this tutorial. But look at this in play mode, now everything is working well. We press the right mouse button and we are zooming. And we are using the focal length of our camera to do this zooming action. And the next step I want to teach you is how to use the depth of field of our camera to focus objects. And also we are going to use a simple technique to focus the objects that are placed in the center of our viewport. I like that we are going to use the depth of field to create a high quality focus setting in our camera. And as you have seen this uh, easiest part, but don't worry because I try to explain everything I do in the clearest I can. Well here in the graph event again we press C in our keyboard and we come in this area to have it more organized. An event in this case has soon events. And now the next step we have to do is where we are looking and what objects we are pointing. For that we need to work again with the third person camera. We get it here and we find get world location. This will be the position of our third person character in the world. Now we need to know where we are looking. Well, for that we find for the function get forward vector. Okay, we got it here. And now in this return value we are the vector float multiplier. This one. And here in this field we need to set a higher value for the multiplier. For example, we use 100,000. Assigning this value so high, what we are doing is saying that this vector is projected like uh, to the infinity. And now we use here the return value for the get wall location and we find for vector plus vector. Now look at this, we need to connect the other value. And the next step we need to do is find for the line trace. We are doing here in the position of our first person character and using a forward vector multiplying with a higher value. And also adding these values, we get the final distance. For that, click here and find for line trace by channel. And now look at this, the start point of this function is our first person character position. And the end point will be this operation that we get the final distance. Now we want to debug how we're working these lines and here in draw debug type use duration. Now we need to execute this function that we are creating. And for this, we are going to create a custom event, this one. We name it, for example, like um, DOF update, and we connect to the line trace by channel input. This will be a custom event, but right now we are not calling it from anywhere in this blueprint. We do it really easy, we use a begin play event. This is the first event when our blueprint is loaded. And like that, we want to do a recurrent function, and we find for timer. You have here this event set timer by function name and we use this timer with this custom event we have set it here DOF update. We write the name here DOF update. This will be the function that it will execute in the timer. Also check looping and here you need to set the value for your time for example 0.2. So every 0.2 seconds, this event will be executed once the blueprint is started. Now let me show you how these lines appear from our character and collide with the objects in our thing. Mainly this line will tell us which are these objects on the thing in which we want to zoom and focus. Now as you have seen in play mode how we are recognizing the heat of the objects, we go here to the line trace by channel and in out hit we find for break hit result. Okay. And here we have all the possibilities that we can use with the hit event. Well, now in this case we use the location output. We click and drag and we find for the function vector minus vector. Okay, don't worry right now because I will explain you later what we are doing here. And again, we are going to look for the actor third person camera. We got it here. We find get wall location for the first person camera. And we connect to the second input of this operation. Okay. Therefore, what we are doing is subtracting the position, it's finding the light trace function with the position of our character. We click here, and this value will return a vector length. 
The next thing we need to do is connect this output in the line trace by channel and we create a branch and the condition will be the resume value of this event. So if it's hitting, we will send a value and if it's not like that, we will send another value. And now look at this here again, in the vector length, we have this return value. We click with the right mouse button and we promote to a variable. We need to rename this variable here in the details panel, for example, to DOF distance. Now in the branch we have created before, if it's true, we connect it to this variable. And if it's false, we can duplicate this variable. Look at this, we are using a float variable. We connect it here and set this value, for example, to a higher value. Okay, like a 100,000. And now like always, compile and save again. Now let's order this blueprint. Later we will organize it better. And now at this moment, as you can see, we have uh, set the this value DOF distance. And this will be the value that will indicate the depth of field that we will use when we are focusing on objects. And now we need to call this function. If you remember, in the begin play event, we use a simple trick using a timer, this one. Like that, we can do the same. Click and drag here, and uh, let's look for a function. It's uh, set timer by function name. Also now we can set the function name here, um, for example, DOF final. And now let me do here, for example, here, okay, we find add custom event, and we use the same name we have used before, DOF final. Now don't forget, this is a recurrent event, so check looping and set the time value 0.2. And again, here we find for the third person camera, we drop it here, we get it, and we find set post process settings. This one, perfect. And now we do a connection here using the output of this custom asset event. And look at this here, we have this input post process settings, so click and drag and find for create post process settings. Now click here and you have every kind of parameters that you can use of your post-process settings for this third person camera. Here we want to work with two values. The first one, the lens, depth of field, distance. So check here, focal distance. You got it here, okay? And the other one will be the aperture. Let me check. Okay, check it here and you got it. Now look at this here, we are using a higher value for the aperture, so if you want to see really the depth of field in your camera, you need to set a value like 1, okay? Now, what we need to do is get this variable D of distance and connect to the focal distance. At this point, I can understand that this blue brain for beginners, it could be a bit complicated, but don't worry about it. I'm pretty sure that after doing it a couple of times, you will understand really well. Now you can see here again the DOF final custom event. Also we have here our event begin play and we are using two functions. We are using the first one for calculating the DOF distance and the other one to set the post process value. So now like always guys, we compile and save, we do a play. And as you can see here, now it's working well. Okay, look at this because we are looking at this sphere and when we are looking at this cube, as you can see, our depth of field is adjusted correctly and smoothly. We are using the right mouse button to make this zoom. Okay. Well, now let's organize this a bit. We proceed in our keyboard and we comment this one. We name it like a DOF final. Also for this one, we proceed again, we comment and we use, for example, the begin play events. And here, this will be the line trace events. Okay. Okay, now I want to do something more that we can do with this project. So we click here and we find for the right mouse button, this one, and we create a new timeline. We set a name for this timeline, like CR timeline. 
and this will be the animation talent for the chromatic aberration. So let's do the same connections here, the preset and release, double click here, we open, add a new float, we name it like a CR value, we add a new keyframe here, we set here 0 for time and also 0 for the value, we set the duration 0 0.5 and here at the end we add another keyframe, we set uh, time and 0 0.5 and the value to 3. And like always, we select all, we press with the right mouse button, we select auto to make this style smoother. Like that, we will lose a higher value for the chromatic aberration. And now again, here in the graph event, we create a new variable. We name it as here value. Look at the green color of this variable. This means that it's a float variable. You are not seeing that, but you need to be sure that you are setting a float variable. You can do it in the details panel. And now we do the update connection and also the value. Ok, like that we are updating this value using this style we have created before. And we will use this variable in the same part here in the post process settings. Let me look for average ratio, ok, and we check this one, intensity. Look at this here, we check and uncheck, and it appears, ok, and we drop it here, we get it. And let's do a connecting of this variable with the intensity. Compile and save like always. We go to our play game. OK. And now look at this, we are using a chromatic aberration. We are using the post process setting as you have seen. OK. Also the depth of field is working really well. Maybe we are using a higher value for the chromatic aberration, but don't worry about it because we can change it in this Thailand that we have created. And here again in the graph event, we press C and we comment it and we set a name chromatic aberration event. And now that everything is working well, we go here again to the line trace by channel and look at this in the drag debug type. Here in the checkbox, we select nothing because now we know that everything is working and we want to hide these debug lines. We try again here. But let me do something because I want to change this value for the chromatic aberration. Let's double click in our tie line. We select the last value and we set it, for example, to 1.5. This is looking better. We are not using a higher value for the chromatic aberration, just a little bit and everything is working really well, look at the focus and also look how the depth of field with this zoom action is working really nice. And finally I want to show you everything that we have talking about in this video tutorial using a more complex project. Look how it's working everything, it's really nice. We are using here the same values with a really smooth depth of field. And also I have to tell you that I have left a very important aspect for the end of this video tutorial. You need to have your collisions activated in your objects. This is really important because think that we are working the line trace function. I like that we need to know which objects are colliding with these lines. Well, don't forget to add simple collider to your objects and everything is still working well. Well, Jorge, thank you very much again for motivating me to do this video tutorial and to you like always. If you like, if you are enjoying, please give me a like, subscribe to the channel and I hope to see you in the next video tutorial. Bye bye.